This is my kind of boat. It's really wonderful. It's everything is perfect. This is just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Pretty amazing. I got to talk to my banker. Love it. Absolutely love it. Just magnificent. I don't know why this boat is still for sale. Just wonderful. If I was in the water, I'd probably turn the key right now. <laughs> We'd be gone, baby. <laughs> Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. <laughs> you beat me here. I did beat you here. What took you so long? By the way, uh. Until you get to this boat, then things are going to start smoking. This is a smoking boat. <laughs> Come on right. in. Come Oof. on in. That's brisk. Is it, is it warmer in here than out there? Uh, does two degrees count? Yep, we'll take that. Follow me, pal. Oh, there she is. Oh, wow. Uh, isn't that beautiful? Dark blue hull mm -hmm. with a red cove stripe. That's kind of, we do like a gold one ourselves, but that's okay. <laughs> and that, uh, that one, you'd accept that one? Yeah, Ted Hood was a... Uh, uh, got his real start making sails and he started out his sail making business in the back of a bar in uh, Marblehead, Maddie's. He apparently had an office back there, I don't have all the details, but he then built that into a wonderful sail making business and he was the go-to guy for the fast sails. One of his things, he made smaller panels. All the panels and the sails used to be big wide things and his sails were on every boat, including America's Cup winners. Uh, which, by the way, he won one year. Might have been early courageous. Later on, made sales for the other 12 that he was competing against. Uh, he started uh, building boats, designing and building boats. And this was built in the Netherlands to his design. He liked beamy, fat centerboard boats for stability. Uh, if you look at this keel right now, it's kind of a semi-full length thing. Not full length, but, but uh, it's cut back a little bit. But there's a, a lot of lateral space there. And in, when later boats... What he, do you mean by the lateral space? Well, just that lateral surface right there. You see all that surface area there? Yeah. Flat surface area to keep the boat steady and tracking. Um, on later boats, he almost eliminated that completely and turned this into just to go down and have a slight dimple and roll up the other side. And he called them sort of whale bottom boats. And he put a lot of lead in there. And then a center boat would drop out of that bottom. Nice, <laughs> solid steel hull. Uh, with a, a nice epoxy finish over it. If you look closely, you'll see a few bubbles that are trying to pop up. Not unusual with steel boats after a while. You'll get a little moisture under the paint. This is probably not rust, it's just moisture that's gotten under the paint and it needs to be knocked down and addressed at some point. But this bottom is really in nice shape. I like that. Oh, uh, ablating a little bit, but not much. <laughs> <laughs> There's the pin for a centerboard right there. Uh, that's where that's been closed off again. Uh, and that was totally dropped out of the boat and uh, refinished oh, a number of years ago. So it's in good shape. It's just a great big uh, centerboard boat with uh, in wonderful condition. This is, <laughs> we're not used to hearing that sound, are no. we? It sounds like we're putting, it's steel. This is a steel boat. She's got a, a folding prop on here. It has an old fashioned uh, line cutter right here. You see these, these teeth here? Yep. On the new ones we've seen, it's just a sharp bunch of teeth that's circular on the whole thing. This one, I just don't want to get anywhere near it. She's ready for a zinc. Uh, here's a little zerk fitting on the end to help grease this. Um, this actually, uh, this, this, this may be a, a feathering prop where you can change the pitch to it uh, as you go along. There's a patch here where they've done some, uh, some work and there might have been some plate work that was done in the boat. Uh, every once in a while, when they've, they've done a whole sounding on this whole hull, and apparently it came out fairly well, but there were a couple spaces. And I'm going to guess maybe it was someplace in here that they had to replace uh, a, a little piece of plating. Interesting, it's around this uh, through hull fitting. Uh, I think she's, uh, she looks great down here. 50 year old steel boat. It's going to last for another 50 years. It'll far outlast the, uh, the next one of the boat. But I really, I really like it. And the top sides look great. There's a couple little nicks and dings in it. Uh, but boy, would I love to take this around the world. I feel so good at sea in this boat. It's got a lot of, look at the, look at the full belly to the boat. It's got tons of room for storage and tankage in here. And I'm thinking that she has, uh, uh, oh gosh, 100 gallons of fuel at least and 200 gallons of water on board. Uh, 
and I know there's room if you wanted to find fit more in there somewhere you could. She draws about six feet right now and uh, five foot eleven actually and when the board's down it's about eleven feet so it picks up another wow. five feet of, of uh, lateral surface, lateral plane there to stabilize her course. Yeah, I think this is going to be really nice to see. I can't wait to climb that ladder, throw off a little of this plastic, and uh, uh, see what's up there. Yeah. I, I can't wait. Yep. This is my kind of boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You ready to go? Yeah, let's see you climb I'll head on ladder. down here. Here we go. Come on up, buddy. Oh, wow. Look at this. Wow. We've now gotten to sailboat heaven. <laughs> this is, oh, I hate the phrase old school, but this is left from the 50s and 60s. This is spectacular. We're on a real boat. Look at the size of this boat. Look at the winches. Look at the beef on these winches, these variant winches. Look at the gear on board here. This is heavy duty. Look at the teak combing. Look at the trim on top of the teak combing. Oh yeah, that's a really nice detail. And for example, look at the hinges on this cockpit hatch. Uh, those, we've never seen a hinge like that anywhere else. Those, those would withstand anything. Uh, right behind me, there is a little hole here where they can put another mast. It's called a backup mast. <laughs> it's in back That's of me. the technical term? It's a technical term. And uh, so we're standing in a yawl, which I love the best of all. Why time. do you like the yawls so much? Uh, I just like, they're pretty, number one. Number two, it's very easy to just go sailing, as we know, with just the jib and, and the mizzen hauled up, and the boat balances, and you can just take a nice, easy day sail. And you can control it right here. It's also a great place, as they say, to have your picture taken, to have the mast behind you. Historically, photographically, yep. primo. Keeps your posture nice and exactly. upright. Uh, and, and, and truth be told, in some heavy seas on the PB, where, which was a yaw rig, uh, it was kind of comforting to have that mizzen mast back there to hold on to instead of just this big space that you could get thrown out of or thrown around in. So there was a little safety factor that I would adhere to the uh, mizzen. So I like the mizzen. Nice big fan tail on the boat. What's uh, this? This box? Yeah. Uh, my guess is, and I don't want to unscrew it, but my guess is we're going to find a couple of propane tanks in there laying down horizontally. Right behind us and behind the uh, mizzen mast, which would stand right here, We've got two amazing lockers for stowage of your uh, bumpers and dock lines. It's, it's huge. And look at the nice finish the Dutch do uh, to, the, uh, to the sole of this uh, locker. Yeah, it's beautiful. Likewise, one more of them over here. You could almost turn these into miniature aft cabins. On some boats, they do. What are these wooden things down here, Randy? Uh, I'm going to say uh, fender boards. You got it. All right. Yeah. Anyway. And uh, spring-loaded halves. This is this is really solid. Everything on here is solid. A lot of the superstructure is is wood. The cabin house and so forth. The decks are have steel frames, and there's uh, three-quarter inch Brunzeal um, teak plywood over those. It's just, I, I'm sort of speechless right now because it feels so much like the old PB. Uh, it does. But anyway, probably about a 40-inch wheel covered with alkyde and a nice. Uh, teak cockpit sole down here with two big scuppers and engine controls straight ahead. So, I mean, the teak looks immaculate to me. The teak and the varnish is jewel like. Like that. Now, check that out. And look at the finish work done inside there wow. and how well everything is just done bright. Historically, we had these giant lockers in the cockpits to accommodate the sails because you could look at the drawing and here'd be the mainsail and then there'd be jib, jib, jib overlapping each other that the designer had drawn onto the sketch. And they expected you back then to buy each one of those sails. So you need a place to put those big bags. There's a place to put, oh, two or three of them, four of them right there, that would be huge. But of course today, uh, with everybody using roller furling units, um, we're kind of down to a couple of sails on board. Yep. What am I looking at here? This is a uh, an old bilge pump. It's still connected, and that handle will come up. Should come up here. Yep, there we go. Ah. I, I think that's probably pretty antique, and I don't think you'd want to rely on that to save the boat necessarily. Yeah, yeah it's Possibly. neat though. Oh my gosh, here we go again. All the rest of the sails huh. go in here. Just ginormous. And you can see the uh, electronics for the self-steering 
unit right down there. Yep. The autopilot. Now we also have here something we like. What's that? A nice big bridge deck. Nice big bridge deck. And really long too. I'm sitting down here. I'm so comfortable right now. And I am so safe. And no matter which way the boat is healing, I'm in great shape. This is ideas? Um, halyard winch? No. No, centerboard. Oh, yeah, centerboard. of course. This is a centerboard, uh, and it, it captures the wire on it right onto the drum. There's a little mark here to show that you don't need to pull it up any further than that. So you, you would let that out, and that white mark will travel up to this exit point here. And down in the cabin, we'll find a tube that leads down to the board. These decks are the widest we've seen yet. They must be three feet at least. And I, again, I'm sorry, but I almost feel like we're on the PB, which was all flush deck, but we had about this much walking area. Look at the gorgeous handrail, the whole length of the boat. Here we go. Two more big derades up forward here. It's going to blow a lot of wind in and out of the boat. I just love walking around this deck. It's just really pleasant. Uh, a big Maxwell uh, windlass up here. And somebody's going to correct me on that because it's a vertical one. Look at the size of the cleats up here. They're massive. Everything's massive. We're on a 45-foot boat, and everything tends to sort of uh, get a lot bigger, a lot faster, and a lot heavier. Somebody wants to go around the world on a boat. This is, this is a boat I'd go around in the world in, no yeah. question. It's really wonderful. Do we know if the bright work has just been redone? Uh, I think probably three or four years ago, maybe. Yeah. I don't think it's brand fresh but it's in great shape and they may top it off every year. A lot of people will bring their varnish up with six, seven coats and then every year light sand it one or two coats and it just keeps the varnish they put on on there still. Here's a, uh, a little cradle for the life raft, I'm sure. And over on this side, a place for your Charlie Noble, which is the, the little uh, bubble that comes up for your stove. Uh, so we know there's gonna be a wood burning stove on board. All right. Great big center cabin hatch, just like the forward hatch. Look at the amount of volume of air that's gonna come through this boat. It's enormous. It's, everything is perfect. They, they've really done a wonderful job of maintaining it, and they've been uh, doing that as a, sort of a serious maintenance routine since about 2002. Big inch and a half stainless Genoa tracks here uh, with a nice flush-mounted uh, uh, Genoa track lead. This is fabulous. It just, it feels so good just to be in this. This is like, if I was in the water, I'd probably turn the key right now. <laughs> We'd be gone, baby. <laughs> what do you think? Is it that time? It's that time. That time. Let's go below. All right. Okay, Rande, uh, before you come down here, I just want you to notice one thing. Uh, you see these little snaps and things along the, the, uh, uh, the side here of the, yep. of the dodge? This is set up for just a companionway dodger. We just had a companionway dodger there, and it was really nice because we'd say, how's it going, Skipper, what's going on? And the spray would come over and hit this, and we'd be dry as a bone, and the man on the helm who's getting inundated with waves, is thinking, oh, I wish I was under that little Dodger. <laughs> but of course, today, you have the giant Dodger that comes over here. And I wouldn't mind having one on probably for a long trip today. All these fittings here that were obviously manufactured just for this, the, uh, the track, the bronze track here, uh, it's so seaworthy and well done. Just, it's yeah. really, really cool. So anyway, I'm gonna head on down. Come on down with, follow me down here if you like. Even before you get down there. Yes. I mean, this. Oh, I know. I, so you nice. you wanna touch everything, right? This yeah. feels really smooth, you know why? No. It's clear plastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's not varnish. It looks like it's varnish because there's so much varnish behind it. Yeah, from here, if you told me that was stainless, yeah, I can't no. believe it. <laughs> no, this looks, this is actually a great idea because right below here, you're, we're gonna find a chart table and uh, this is just a spray shield for the chart tables. There's so much real room in this boat right now. Here we are at a real chart table. Now, this is pretty amazing. Check this out now. Where are we going? Uh, I gotta find out what's on this chart, but I'll tell you something. That's where we're going. Whatever's on this chart, we'll go to. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, unfortunately, it's just around the corner. Oh, <laughs> it's the end of the driveway. Yeah, well, you're, you're close to the companionway, of course, uh, as you should be. Everything, all your, your, your radar, your GPS, everything's right here in front of you. A really nice uh, quarter berth. Look at the size of this thing. When you're sailing along, this is what you look like. I know these pictures are out there and so forth, but you have to sort of just take it all in and think, look at that boat. That's a massive piece of boat moving through the water. 
and she's built of Corten steel, which is like twice the tensile strength of normal mild steel. So this is one hell of a strong boat. Now the little tidbit about Cort 10 is it's actually uh, pre-corroded, so it has a surface of corrosion already built into it. And you know that because... I used to be a structural engineer. God, we have so much to offer <laughs> our people out there. And Randy keeps so much of his light under such a big basket. Thank you, sir. That's a great freight. Oh, God, this is so nice. I look at the uh, cabin sole. This is the old teak and holly kind of thing we've seen so often. But you know what? It's all nicely oiled. It's not varnished. The varnish looks great. It's very flashy and shiny and sort of looks very sophisticated. But this, this is going to keep you from sliding around and uh, when it gets wet or damp. And it will because we're on a boat. Let's talk about the galley. This is, again, the way they used to do it. This is all finished off a nice varnished teak and with stainless sink, we've got hot and cold water and a hand pump back here. This is a hand pump to give you, again, a, maybe salt water or it could be just fresh water. Sometimes they said they like to use a hand pump for fresh water so people don't use a whole lot and turn on a tap and run out of water. Uh, and then again, another nice thing is if it's salt water, you can rinse with salt, save you all of your fresh water. But if you look up under here, you'll see, look at all the cup storage and dish storage and so forth. And over here, we have, what do we have in here? Oh, just more plate storage. And look how nicely finished it is inside this locker. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah, it really is. They don't do that anymore. And then you've got, you've got, you've got places here for, oh, this is more cups and things, but you could put food in there. Uh, you can do just about anything you want. I mean, look at this one too. This is probably amazing. What a, Oh my <laughs> word. Uh, well, That's how we know it's a real sailor. Th these are real sailors on this boat. These are, these are serious sailor people because they bring with them no matter where they go. They're Denny Moore. This isn't really an advertisement, but it's just sort of fun. Anyway, that's great stuff on a boat. Even a boat as lovely and sophisticated, sophisticated and as this boat is, that same late night watch when it's cold and somebody hands you up a bowl of Denny Moore, you're going to be so happy. Anyway, so we'll put Denny Moore right there on the stove. And here's a big, this looks like an old Luke stove. It is a Paul Luke stove. They don't make these anymore. Uh, but like everything Luke built, uh, it's really solid. There's nothing tinny about this. And it's good, so you can put a 20 pound turkey in there. Uh, propane gas, and a nice little gauge to tell you how hot your stove is. We always gotta pull up one more hatch here to find pot and pan storage. Oh, wow. But look how big that is. You could put bags of rice and things for long trips back there. Oh, well, right behind me, we have this big... I love the stainless. Don't you like the stainless? Yeah. It's just really it's timeless. handsome yeah. and practical and makes sense. Look at this. Look at the thickness on this. And you could put 200, 300 pounds of ice in here if you wanted to augment it. But it does have refrigeration. And uh, this can be slid either way to access... Uh, a frozen shelf in here for your frozen peas or anything you want to do um, without opening the whole thing. i got to talk to my banker. This is so nice. Um, first of all, I'm sitting on a really wide settee, and this, is, this has got another foot to pull out here. So this would almost give you practically a double size settee once it's pulled out, I'm guessing. I, I can feel it back there. And look at this, look at this pilot berth. Look at the width on this and the length of it. It goes way back under. And uh, when you're at sea, that's going to be like being in your own cabin. I'll tell you one thing I like to do and uh, with, with this sort of berthing is you put a little rod up here and you put hang curtains. Just a little short curtain. It, it actually creates a little, it does create a little cabin atmosphere for the person in that, in that bunk. And it cuts out any light if you're trying to sleep in the off watch during the daytime. This is gorgeously done. We've got the table out. There's a full set of fiddles all the way around the table, so your silverware and your plate's not going to fly off. But then the boat heels over. Oh my God, it heels over. What's going to happen? This tilts. This is gimbal. This is called a gimbal table. There's probably about 150 pounds of lead down in a box beneath this table to offset the weight of these wings flying around out here. It just moves gently with the, uh, the boat's moving. You tack and suddenly over here. I actually uh, replaced our cabin uh, table on the PB uh, with a nice Hinkley built version of this. And I put it in the boat and said, okay, crew, we're eating, dining below tonight. And uh, 
All the modern crew I had on board said, no, I think we want to eat up in the cockpit. <laughs> everything, is, everything is rugged, and it's built uh, to carry you safely over the bounding main and uh, get you home again. And being down here, and you know this boat, and there's not a sign of a weep or drip anywhere. I'm, somebody might come down and find something, but I don't see it. And the PB was the same way. Uh, this is a, a real haven, a safe haven for crew off watch. One of the highlights of this cabin, too, is this stove. Now, this is, a, this is built in the Netherlands, and uh, this is, I think, a, a Dutch-built stove, though it could be, the, the guts of it could be from Luke, but I think this is Dutch. I had one on, on my boat that was built over there with a the tile and the, and the heavy uh, iron grate in it and uh, a, little, a little door to cover it up and so forth. And there was a, an ash bin down here. This is very nice. See, the ash just falls down in that little bin, and you take it out and uh, take it ashore, pour it over the side. That little fireplace will burn wood, charcoal, anything you want to put in there, um, uh, old clothes. <laughs> uh, it's great. Uh, and it will keep this whole cabin uh, warm. There's a metal uh, flash piece behind it to help uh, capture additional heat. One thing they've done too is they've installed uh, bunk boards. This little sort of pilot berth is kind of cool. It just gives them one more place for another berth in here. And uh, wouldn't this be a great place for kids? If you had a couple of kids, they would love that. And then when, once they get in there, just put up the bunk board and, uh, and they're there. They have their own little cabin. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. This is where that uh, wire comes back from that winch up on the deck. And it, will, it goes through a little over a wheel up on deck and then curves down, pulls up and down the centerboard. Down on the starboard side, another huge pilot berth with a really good bunk board and drawer storage for the crew. And underneath here, uh, there's going to be probably some water tankage on either side. Let's take a look at the head. I'm going to step to the back of the head. That seems sort of funny, but the big handle is really nice. You really get a good, you get a good motion out of that head when you pump it. Yeah. That uh, leverage I'm, comes in handy. Yes, I'm standing in a very nice um, shower stall here and looking through that grate, it looks, I would not be surprised if that's not a, a, a steel uh, plate underneath it to capture the water to go down to a, a catch box uh, below for the gray water. And on this side, again, we have another little hand pump and hot and cold water uh, and a nice stainless sink. I can't believe how much room is in here, really. Just magnificent. I don't know why this boat is still for sale. What do you think, Randy? You're in there. Wow. Are you impressed? Oh, it's much deeper, even just standing inside. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? Come on into the master cabin. Oh, wow. Check this out. Two nice size uh, single berths with square ends. We're up at this part of the boat. We have square ends. We don't have little pointy pie ends on it. Uh, which is just wonderful. But you've got a place for a library, for your books on both sides, and uh, a storage rack for your, the, what your current reading is, and tons of storage here. Look at the drawer storage. Look how nicely it comes out and just misses all the other doors. Nothing, nothing bangs into it. Would you believe? Another bunk board. Bunk boards. You're in your privacy, uh, and maybe you don't want to use the head up there, go outside. So they, they've made accommodations for you. No kidding. Ta-da! <laughs> this is the way we did it in the old days. You just sit right there, you can talk to your honey. <laughs> Say, sweetheart. You can also think of it too as probably not something you'd use all the time. It's nice to have a backup that's really all plumbed and ready to go. But that's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that's it's the way they used to do it. Stealth. But check this out. I have my own sink. This is like one-stop shopping. It is. This is truly an owner's cabin up here. And bec because they didn't try to stick too many cabins on other things in the rest of the boat, the owner gets his own own space, and it's really a nice one. You almost think we're in the, the rear of the boat because you're in the, such a big space. It's really nice how they used to do this. But uh, I think we should just test this berth and see if it's not an optical illusion. Okay? Yep. So um, we're just going to sit down here, and oh, I'm going to pull the covers right up and over. And, oh, this really feels good on my back. This is so nice. Satin finish on all this uh, teak. This is pretty swell. And watch the athletic 
move to just pop out of the bunk. One piece of air and that is five. The minute they call me up on watch. Oh, Randy, this was the best day so far. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm really excited. We got to her and all the all the juices start to flow. The brain starts to tick off. And, and you're really looking at a real boat. This is 46 feet of Ted Hood design, Dutch built, uh, centerboard steel vessel. And her skin is gorgeous. Uh, her bottom is, is just classic center border from the period. The cockpit was a real cockpit for a real sailboat. The, the, the walkways on, on either side of the, of the uh, cabin house were three feet wide. Just a beautiful, beautiful yawl. Ted Hood liked his yawl and he liked shoal draft. And the interior, everything is perfect. The chart table is just the right way. It's just the right proximity to the, to the companionway. The, the galley is plenty big. It was so exciting to get on that boat. This isn't the sort of boat that our viewers are going to see every day. Really a great looking boat that's going to sails like crazy. Uh, I have a question for you. Oh, the question. The question, Randy, 10. We know she floats because I've seen the video of her floating and actually moving through the water. Sea Dog thought it was great. She could, she could do laps around the deck. So she gets 10 for a float. 25. Whoa! 25. I, I, I want to go higher. This melt would make me really happy. This is probably your most favorite boat that we've reviewed, right? It is my most favorite boat I've seen today. Yeah. My most favorite boat. This, that boat will go to Europe. She'll go around the world. Uh, and you know, if you bounce off the shore somewhere, all you got to do is find a guy with a welding torch and he can glue you back together. Makes a lot of sense for a around the world boat. I hope nobody out there buys this. <laughs> Please don't buy it. <laughs> I've got I think you're calling dibs. Dibs, definitely dibs. I got dibs. I've <laughs>